Strauss, uh, congratulations on the deal, first of all. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Absolutely. A lot of questions uh, from investors as to about how this is going to be integrated. But one question that seems to come up is how much autonomy do you plan to give the folks over at Zynga? Look, we're thrilled to be combining with the team at Zynga. And we expect to fold T2 Mobile Games, which is our mobile games division, into Zynga. As Zynga will remain the brand and will be responsible for running the multiple titles that exist at Zynga already and at T2 Mobile Games. We have a, an unusual structure at our company. Our labels have a great deal of autonomy. And while we share cultural attributes, we're incentivized in the same direction, uh, Rockstar Games, Private Division, 2K, and soon Zynga each have the ability to pursue their own destinies, pursue their own passions, and reward their creative folks. Mm -hmm. That method has worked for us really well. But talk to us about where the synergies do come, in particular, the assets, the IP that you can use from one use case to the other. Well, it's a great question. We've already uh, said that we expect to identify something like $100 million in annual cost synergies relatively soon, within the first two years. Uh, but you weren't really asking about costs. We've also said that we believe there will be something like $500 million in annual run rate revenue synergies. And that doesn't include game titles. That wouldn't include, for example, taking Take-Two's legacy console and PC intellectual property and bringing it to mobile, something we very much hope and expect to do with the help of the team at Zynga. You know, I'm curious, take two stock is down almost 15% on the day. What kind of conversations are you having with investors right now to convince them that this is the transformative deal for take two? We're talking about the long term. And while no one is cavalier about uh, any day's trading, after all, there are investors on, on both sides of that trade, and <clears throat> we're concerned about it, all of our investors. The truth is our story has been one where we've tried to make intelligent, creative moves over a long period of time. And in the fullness of time, we've generally outperformed the market and our peers. So in this instance, we think the industrial logic is, is unassailable. However, we'll have to work very hard to deliver that over a number of years. And I'm convinced that we will do so. We always trade ultimately in the fundamentals. I never, I never argue with the market in any given day. Fair enough. And I mean, to Shanali's point, though, I mean, this is a huge deal. I mean, it's said to be one of the biggest acquisitions in the gaming industry. I believe it's definitely one of the biggest acquisitions uh, for Take Two here. And there are a lot of people that look at how you digest this, not only from the integration standpoint, but of course, how you pay for it with regards to uh, the split between cash and the share price here. Do you have enough confidence here to be able to tell the analysts and the investors out there that this is effectively a profitable deal? Well, it's very much going to be an accretive deal upon closing, which we expect in our first fiscal quarter of next year. We've said all along that uh, we're willing to pursue inorganic opportunities when there's a great team. There's a great team at Zynga. When there's great intellectual property, Zynga has unmatched intellectual property in the mobile space that they own and control. And there's an opportunity for an accretive transaction. And so far, we haven't been wrong in the 14 years that we've been at this. So we think the math makes sense, but of course we're going to have to work hard to, to deliver against the opportunities that I just outlined, and we intend to do so. You were talking about sort of the way who will lead the business, how Zynga will sort of operate on to a certain degree of autonomy, but this is also a deal where you bring cultures together. And I'm going to ask a relatively sensitive question now, Strauss, because of course it is an area, your industry is one that has been tainted thus far with a cultural problem, Activision Blizzard first and foremost. But I'm interested in how you are taking that on at the moment, in particular when you're thinking about the distribution of your board, the executive, the management, and how you ensure that you bring on Zynga and, and make everyone happy. It's very much our goal. Look, we're really proud of the culture that we've, we've built to take to. Uh, and one of the things that was most compelling about this opportunity is we have a shared cultural vision and approach with Zynga. We both believe in mutual respect, collaboration, honesty, integrity, and kindness. We're known for that at take two. Uh, and uh, as a result, we have one of the lowest attrition rates, if not the lowest attrition rate in the business. Our attrition rate is less than half of the industry average. We have an extraordinarily long tenure board and management team and an exceedingly diverse company that starts actually with our board, which is and always has been 
exceedingly diverse. You know, those so, companies, Strauss, but also the industry at large. I was a beat reporter on the video gaming industry when Gamergate really broke out. And I'm wondering, do you think that this is an industry-wide issue? And has there been any change? I think there's been a great deal of change in the industry. I think we always felt that we approached this, uh, the, the, the issue of diversity and sensitivity and treating people appropriately from a position of great respect and awareness from the very beginning. It's, it's part of our DNA. We can always do better. I think, if anything, we're even more greatly attuned to the need for more diversity and more inclusion. And I think our competitors are largely as well. So I do think progress has been made. And of course, there's more to be done at any given time. Let's talk a little bit about what the customers want, what the gamers themselves want uh, out of Take-Two, out of Zynga, uh, and, and really writ large in this gaming space. Uh, you have some great titles, but some of those titles are aging. Zynga also has some great titles, but a refresh of some of them, including Farmville, uh, have not necessarily landed uh, maybe as hot uh, as folks would have expected here. Do you have, I guess, in the pipeline, the strategy the design, and more importantly, the creativity to kind of have that next big thing. That's our plan. That's always been our approach. Our, our, our approach has been built on the desire to be the most creative, the most innovative, and the most efficient company in the entertainment business. And of course, we, we don't always succeed. Our creative teams are not only encouraged to pursue their passions, that's all we want them to do. That's all they do. And more often than not, at Take Two, that's worked out. We have among, if, if not the highest, hit ratio in the business with an extraordinary collection of owned intellectual property, something like 11 franchises that have each sold over 5 million units with an individual release. Franchises that we bring to market regularly and continue to perform better than the previous iteration. And Zynga, for its side, also has forever franchises and the biggest collection of owned and controlled intellectual property in the mobile interactive entertainment business. So we think it's a hand in glove fit. Your, your point about quality though yeah. is well taken. We understand at the end of the day, we always have to bring something to the consumer that they haven't seen before okay. that's better than what they've seen in the past.